video walkthrough on a Coleman lantern. We'll start in the back. You're pre-wired for a back camera. This one doesn't have one. Um, they never do. They're just pre-wired for one. And it does, it, and eventually when you get, if you choose to have a camera in, it does use power off of those marker lights up there. So the running lights on your tow vehicle need to be on for the camera to work. Right here you have your city water inlet. This is where you're going to hook your hose up to to run city water. You won't have to use your pump or anything like that. Here you have a mount for an exterior grill. Just make sure you pin it for your travel so it doesn't swing open and hit a car next to you. Right here, cable inlet. If you're going somewhere that provides cable, you can hook it up through here. Shore cord, this is your shore cord. It'll be with the unit. All you do is twist this on and then this part right here, this little gray part, can get tightened on too. That's gonna keep it from getting pulled out of there. And it's 50 amp. Um, Definitely recommend investing on uh, in a 50 amp surge protector to plug it in too and then plug that in just in case something were to happen. Got you a gray tank back here back here with its own valve. We'll make sure that handle gets closed but before you guys take it. But always always recommend making sure that handle is closed before you take that cap off or else that, that you're going to get a little bit of gray tank water on you. That gray tank is just for the kitchen sink. So your kitchen sink is on its own gray tank. And then you have another one here, another gray tank valve, which makes sure this one I can actually reach to close it for you. There you go. And this is your dump station. This is going to be for your main bathroom. Well, your, not main bathroom, but your only bathroom. And then that'll have its own black and gray tank. Here's the black handle there and the gray tank handle is the only one I showed you. Again, make sure those are closed before you take the cap off. And then I always dump the black tank first, let that get drained out then dump the gray tank that'll flush out the hose so when I carry up to put the hose in the bumper which I forgot to show you come over here the bumper bumper caps come off that's where you're going to store your sewer hose that way when I pick it up to carry it it's not dripping in black tank water it's got gray tank water and it. it's not as bad pass through storage with your backup cranks one of them is going to be for your manual backup for your slide out the other one will be a manual backup for your stabilizer jacks we're here, lots of good information, unloaded vehicle weight. So as this trailer sits right now, it weighs 8,594 pounds. Gross vehicle weight is 11,176 pounds. That's in the most this trailer will ever weigh, ever weigh at full cargo carrying capacity, max water, max occupancy. The most important numbers right here, 80 PSI. They are filled to that right now, so you don't have to worry about changing that or checking that. But I definitely recommend checking it before every trip. So if you're towing it from home, you're going to a campground, check your tire pressure, make sure it's at 80. Go off of this, not what the tires say. Up here you got dual 20 pound cylinders. They are filled. There's a cover for them, so don't worry. Um, got a regulator right here, so if you can see, because it's not see because of the sun. If it's pointing this one, it's gonna pull from this tank first. If this tank were to be on and this tank were to get depleted, a little diaphragm up in here will open up and it'll switch to pulling from this tank automatically. However, this selector doesn't move indicating it has switched so you have no way of knowing it has switched so keep that in mind and then some people put it in the middle like this thinking it's going to pull from both tanks equally it doesn't work that way it's one side or the other um, you do not have to take this off every time you want to get access to your propane you can get in through this top cover right here battery it's a group 24 uh, battery rv marine gray battery um, if it's going to be a long time between trips, I recommend disconnecting the negative lead off of it to keep anything from using your battery. Um, in the winter, I recommend taking your battery out, storing it in the garage, basement, shed, anything warmer than just being sat outside during the winter. Power tongue jack with a light. And that just beats hand cranking it. Got your seven way on the end. This is what's going to hook to your truck to allow the light, the trailer lights on this to work and the brakes on the trailer and whatnot. Your truck does require a brake controller for the brakes on the trailer to work and by law you need brakes to tow this because it does weigh over 2,000 pounds chains cross them and then you do have a breakaway that's this right here you can see that to the box is the other end of it right here that'll get hooked up with your truck as well so if any of the hitches hitching were to come undone it's going to pull the pin out of the box activate the brakes on the trailer keep it from going all over the place other side of that storage compartment right here you are pre-wired for solar uh, it doesn't have solar, you have to buy the panels and everything you need. 
and all that does is trickle charge your battery. Fresh water, this is where you're going to fill your onboard fresh tank. Just rest your hose in there, turn it on, it'll fill it up. Watch its progress on the inside monitoring panel. Don't wait until you hear water squirt out everywhere. And then definitely recommend draining that after every trip. Um, you, don't water, you don't want water sitting there getting stagnant. And the drain for it is, let's see if I remember where it was. Oh, I don't remember where it was. Oh, right there. That's the drain for your fresh tank. Right here you have these stabilizer jacks. These are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. Um, so don't use these to pick the weight of the trailer up. You can extend them, you can see them go down. If you want your trailer to be level, you use your tongue jack to get it front to back. And then your, um, if you want it side to side level, back it in under some, block to some blocks underneath your tires to get it level side to side. You don't want to use these to pick up the weight of the trailer, because they could break. There you go. There are self-resetting breakers in here. So if you do end up trying to lift it up, it'll reset that breaker. You have to, it'll trip the breaker, you have to wait for it to reset to use the jacks again. If the breaker were to fail, and you end up bending the jacks, these jacks don't just bend out of nowhere. Um, they're not bent now, um, and they just don't bend out of nowhere. They have to be misused to bend. So if you notice that they are bent, and you take this in, that's usually not going to be something we can warranty, because you bent your jacks. Black tank flush, this is where you're gonna work. Um, just keep it clean. They do make screens for these. They don't recommend you run them with the screen on. But as far as like storing this camper, it's gonna, it's gonna keep debris from going in there. Um, insects from building nests. And when I when you tow it, it's gonna keep road debris from getting in there too. Outdoor kitchen area. The sink drains to a tank. Um, GFCI protected outlet. Plenty of storage space out here. Mini fridge. Mini fridge is only going to work when this camper is plugged in. It doesn't work like the fridge inside. And then you do have a light up in there. Alright, that's pretty much it for you. Out there, just one more thing about these doors. They do have a lot of force behind these struts. Um, definitely helps to use ooh, two hands. That's it. There we go. You got to really push them in. And then be careful when you open it. Don't let it slip out of your hand because I've been bopped in the chin because of all the force behind them. Alright, that's pretty much it for the outside. We're mosey our way onto the inside. Let me turn this AC off because it's kind of loud. I want you folks to be able to hear me. We'll start here. Controls for your awning. So you can extend and retract your awning here does not automatically stop when it goes out that's something you have to visually look at and we'll let it go all the way out so you can actually do we have room to go all the way out yeah <laughs> when you see that bare metal tube and there should be a flap we'll make sure that flap there Sometimes you gotta roll it back in just a little bit. There you go, and then back out. You know, when you see that like white sticker and the bare metal tube and that flap hanging out like that, you're all the way open. They are adjustable for pitch, so you can grab right here, pull it down. You could do both ends like this. So if it's raining, you can have water pitch off to the corner rather than all the way along the edge. If it does start storming real bad, real heavy gusts of winds, roll your awning up. There's no sensors and it doesn't it won't know to roll itself up. And if you roll it in wet because it was raining, as soon as you get the chance to, as soon as it gets sunny out again, I'll roll it back out, let the water dry off because you don't want it rolled up for a long time while it's holding moisture. You start to get smelly and it'll, it'll kind of stain the fabric a little bit. Well, that's going in. We'll talk more about this. You do have the ability to mount a TV in here if you want. You have a power outlet there. This is going to be your antenna power. So if you can use your antenna, turn that on if you're using cable turn it off All right so this is on this is off I would just leave it on because more likely than not you'll be using antenna uh, most places don't have coax set up for you anyways and then Wi-Fi power this is if if you opted for the wine guard uh, Wi-Fi extender that's an, an optional thing that would need to be installed remote for your radio remote for your fireplace we'll demonstrate those in a bit 
Um, I was just waiting for the awning to get closed so I can talk about a little bit of that over there. So you can read how full your battery is. It's always going to read charged when you're plugged in. Your fresh, your black, your gray one, and then your gray two. Your gray two is going to be um, the kitchen sink in here. And it might be the kitchen sink in here and the outdoor kitchen sink. Um, good chance is it's both. Um, if it's not both, it might just be the uh, just the outdoor kitchen. Then you have controls for your water heater. It's, oops, can't see it. <laughs> water heater on gas, so it's gas only. And then your water pump. If you're going to use your fresh tank, turn your water, water pump on. You can hear it. Then you have controls for exterior lights. That is going to be your awning lights right there. Sorry for all the movement. And then interior lights, you'll turn off these main row of interior lights. All the other lights, like the ones on the slide out and like underneath the kitchen, those will have to be turned off manually. And then you have all your controls for your slide out. So this one is this slide. This one in the middle is the back slide. And then the one on the end is the kitchen side. Radio is super simple to use. So as you can see it's on now, that's your power for your radio. You have different zones. So zone one is inside, you can turn the inside speakers off. Zone two is outside, you can turn the outside speakers off. You can have them both on, you can have them both off. These numbers right here, one through six, presets, push and hold to say presets, play, pause, all your change the channels, change the um, song, Bluetooth, so you can Bluetooth your phone to it, mode button, auxiliary port, headphone jack. You probably will never use your headphone jack. And then USB port right there. If you are going to use a USB, uh, keep in mind there's an interface with here, it's just for charging your phone. And then your remote controls all of your functions of the radio. Power for your fireplace, turn on right there. That's the power button right, right here. You can change it right here, you can use change the readout, or the Celsius or Fahrenheit. This one right here changes the, uh, it's the dimness of the flames. You have a timer and then you can change the heat. Get back to Fahrenheit. Oh, that's not it. That's Fahrenheit. So you can change the heat with these ones down here. It's nice having a remote for that. That's it for this. We're kind of gonna we're gonna kind of go kind of counterclockwise around here. Bathroom, very simple. This is the resettable GFCI. If any of you GFCIs were to trip, this is y'all you're gonna come and hit reset on. Very easy. You'll know which one it is, which ones are GFCI because they'll have a, a sticker somewhere on the outlet labeling it that is a GFCI outlet. Plenty of storage in the medicine cabinet here. Plenty of storage underneath here. Shower is super simple. Right, let's get this hung up for you. Removable shower head. Makes it easier to shower. And then hot and cold. You have a fan up here. Make sure you open this and turn the fan on and run it when you're going to take a shower in here. Just so it kind of keeps the condensation from building up in the walls. And then it comes with a nice relevant shower curtain. And your toilet is just as simple as long as you're pushing and holding this down. Your toilet is just going to keep continuing to flush. And then your lights for your bathroom are right here. Bedroom door. Make sure when you travel, it is latched like it was. When you get to where you're going, you can unlatch it and slide it all kinds of ways. It doesn't lock open. It only oh, it doesn't lock close. It only locks open. But like I said, make sure that when you travel, you have that locked so it doesn't smack into this wall repeatedly. Yeah, all the lights in the bedroom are controlled at the fixtures themselves, so you just turn them on by clicking the button in the middle. Just like that. You do have one light above the bed as well. Outlets and USB ports on either side of the bed. And I'm going to lift up your cushion right here. Lift up your bed. This is that grill that you can use for the back. And it's got the hose for it already. When is the exit window? You can use it as a regular window. Just push it out like that. Perfect. If there was an emergency, you'd push this out even further, get it free, grab this, yank the screen off, and then jump out the window. Do you have a spot to mount a TV here? You can see it right here. If you buy a TV mount, I usually ditch the screws that come with a mount because they're usually too long. And if you mount a TV here and you screw a hole through the outside of the camper, that's customer damage. Then you do have power and cable outlet right there. Another clicking light for your hallway right here. You just turn it on and off at the light. This nice couch turns into a bed with provisions for storage underneath. 
you just grab up underneath, pull up and out. Got a bed for um, one adult, one child. Um, when you set this up as a bed, you could probably fit two children on there. And then this does fold down with cup holders in it. Another emergency exit. Just open it up here, slide it. If it was an emergency, you would also open the screen portion of it too. And then jump out the window. With these type of windows, you got to give them a little oomph to get them to close all the way. Your fridge, super simple to use. You have on or off, so that's off. That's on. Its only mode is automatic, so it's automatically going to default to 110. Can't ground or lose power. You're going to get unplugged in any which way. Um, it's going to automatically switch to running off of propane if you're gassed with the on. Now, just like, unlike a fridge at home, or unlike that mini fridge you have on the outside, this works a little bit differently. Um, this will take about 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temp. Um, it may be even longer if it's super hot outside. So keep that in mind. More GFCI outlet right here and two USB ports. Plenty of storage for pots and pans. What I want to find is. Yeah. Plenty of storage underneath here too as well. Yep. That's what I'm looking for. This right here. This bag's gonna have all your manuals in it. Any appliance that was in here has a manual installed for it. There's going to be a Dutchman manual. It's going to be very broad. It's going to cover pretty much all of Dutchman's products. But I still encourage you to, when you get home, just kind of gloss through it. Just kind of give you a good idea about maybe stuff from something I didn't tell you, maybe something you didn't know. Another clicking light there. Microwave only works just like your standard household microwave. It won't work if this camper's not plugged in. Then you do have a light, light and then a fan here. If you are going to run that fan, make sure that flap on the outside is open. So it actually has somewhere to vent out to. Cooktop, super simple. You can use this as a cooking, cook, not cooking surface, but countertop surface set like this, but you, then you can fold it up and back when you need it. It'll act as a backsplash. All you do is turn that to the flame, twist your sparker, and you're good to go. All three burners work that way. Your oven works a little bit differently. Turn that to the flame, push and hold. As you're pushing and holding that, pushing, hold in, hold in, you're gonna be twisting that sparker right here. As you're twisting this, and holding that in, I usually come down here and look down here, and what you're looking for is you can see it for that pilot to get lit. Once the pilot is lit, you can then turn this on to your desired temperature and go from there. If you know you're going to have to cook in a few hours and you don't want to have to relight that pilot again, if you turn it off but turn it to the flame, it shuts the burners off but leaves the pilot on. I wouldn't leave a lit, appliance, pi lit pilot unattended. So if you're going to leave the trailer for a couple, couple of hours, even a couple even like half an hour, or if you're gonna to go to bed, turn the dang pilot off. That'll just give you peace in mind. So as I'm moving around here, another USB outlet, plenty more storage here. Now we're onto this bed right here. Now, as this sits is the way you need to have it when you close this slide out. Um, because if you had it set to table mode, this table is gonna to be too far out this way, and it's gonna hit this. And it'll break it so this is the way you need to have your slide out set up when you close it very easy to turn it into a table to a, um, a table actually you might be able to get away with it as a table the way it is definitely just have it set it is, have it set it is as the, ugh, excuse me have it set as the way it is now to close it um, but this table has a couple different positions you can see underneath this table there is four leg spots and three leg, leg holders here. And then you can see that little framework right there. This portion of the dinette, right here. This portion of the dinette can be taken out. So then you can change it from your table. That's why your table has multiple spots. So you can have your table set up as a U-shaped dinette, right? Or, you can take that section out, eliminate that cushion, and you rotate your table 90 degrees, and then now you have it set up as a dinette with just chairs on either side, and it isn't U-shaped. Hopefully that's easy to understand, that's why there's multiple spots to have your table installed at. Just make sure your table is not set up as a table long ways, because it'll hit this, and then I definitely even recommend having this table. I'm gonna set this down a little bit. 
set up like this, tucked in a little bit further back, just to eliminate the possibility of hit it if it hit in your island. Thermostat, the first mode it'll ask is your fan mode, auto high or low. I just recommend leaving it on auto. It's gonna allow your AC to cycle on and off at its set temperature. So if you have it set to 60, once it reaches 60 degrees in here, it'll shut off. Then as it warms back up, it'll cycle back on again to help regulate the temperature. If you were just running on high, eventually it'll freeze up and shut off. Then you have to wait for it to thaw out to run it again. Tap it again, go to cool, goes to 55. Tap it again, goes to furnace, your furnace goes to 90. Very easy. Right below here, propane and carbon monoxide gas alarm that's hardwired to the 12 volt system. No batteries you have to worry about changing. However, if that battery up front starts to lose voltage, starts to die, that will give you low voltage chirps. So if that were the case, just plug the camper in and try to get it charged back up, because it does charge when it's plugged in. Coming into your bunkhouse, all the lights in here, you turn on and off from the lights themselves. USB ports up here, nice bunk in here. Spot for a TV, I believe, yep. So outlet, coax outlet there. Ladder to get up to this bunk, 300 pounds. You just lift it, pull it out. Put your ladder back like this when you close your slide out. Plenty of storage in here. Another emergency exit back here works the same as the one in the bedroom. More, another USB outlet with the clicking light there. This bed does lower. Undo these tabs, it will lower down to here. But if you're going to use this as a dinette, have it set up so you can have people sitting, be able to sit in here. But this does turn into a bed, works similar to the way the other dinette does. Lift the table up, pop them legs out, set them aside, rest the table on this black, these black bumpers, take your back cushions, lay them down. Now you have another bunk in here. That's pretty much it for back here. So I showed you the LP detector, I want to show you the smoke alarm, that's right over here. That uses standard 9 volt batteries if that starts chirping, chirping. Um, oops, sorry. If that starts chirping, throw a new 9 volt in it, it'll like chirp every few seconds. That's like a low voltage chirp. And then right over here, breakers for your, all your 120 volt appliances, appliances, all your fuses for 12 volt appliances. Um, definitely invest, it's all 15, so I definitely would invest in a, like a box of spare 15s. Um, just in case something would happen, you have a fuse to fall back. Alright, well that pretty much concludes our virtual tour of your... Uh, of your Coleman. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this camper. I really like this setup a lot. I like having a bunkhouse like this. Um, if I had to buy a, a new camper, I would get something similar because of the bunkhouse. So, hope you guys enjoy using this camper. Get a heck of a lot of good use out of it. Hope you found the video informative, and goodbye. Hey folks, me again. Forgot to mention one thing. This vent back here is pre-wired with 120 volts and 12 volts, everything you need. Four second AC. It will be a non-ducted AC. One with the knobs you can control there and the AC comes out and the air comes out the AC itself. But it is ducted from the main AC into here. So that is not necessarily something you have you want to or have to do right away.